I think I've always known my inability to focus, the 43 debit cards I've lost, and my keys never being where I left them. In the back of my very busy mind, I've always wondered if I had ADHD. But it wasn't until the pandemic when I, like many, downloaded TikTok. This is my story about how I finally decided to look into whether or not I have ADHD. But it's not just my story. It turns out so many Canadians went through the same process over the last couple of years. Some of them going to extreme lengths to find out whether they had ADHD. So why are we all asking the same questions about ourselves now? And what are we supposed to do when we have the answer? So I went on TikTok and I see people identifying as neurodivergent talking about a wide range of symptoms, many of which I often struggle with. I think that some people become aware because they, you know, they read about it, they hear something on TV, uh, maybe they're on Reddit and they get some, you know, there's some social media posts or they see TikTok. Still, I put off pursuing any answers until I returned to work in the office. I left behind my quiet, comfortable apartment and two sleeping cats and transitioned into a large newsroom surrounded by people. My first day back in the newsroom, the noise surrounded me. The sound of typing on keyboards, cell phones ringing, interviews being done near my desk was debilitating. The transition was rough and I went home with a pounding headache. Then, as it often does, TikTok showed me a very specific video about how sound affects people with ADHD. That's when I finally decided to book an appointment. But issues with noise aren't what people think about when they think about ADHD. So what is ADHD really? If you look it up, you'll find definitions like this. ADHD is one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders of childhood. It is usually first diagnosed in childhood and often lasts into adulthood. Children with ADHD may have trouble paying attention, controlling impulsive behaviors, and may act without thinking about what the result will be, or be overly active. There's three categories that people are very inattentive, distracted, highly, highly distractible. Uh, the second category are, has to do with impulsivity, so these are people that act without thinking. And the last one is hyperactivity, so in children that, you know, they run around, they climb on furniture, they're hard to control behaviorally. There's a wide range of symptoms and it differs from case to case. Children must show six of the symptoms and adults must show five. A person with ADHD can't screen it out. Everything is coming at them at the same intensity. They can't, they can't turn down the volume on five things to listen to one. They have to listen to all five at, at once. That's not a sensory problem. That's an inability to focus attention problem. The Center for ADHD Awareness Canada says ADHD affects approximately 5 to 9% of children and 3 to 5% of adults, but they suspect the number of adults may be much higher now due to the pandemic. The more we're out of schedule, the more our supports are, are taken away, um, the more demand on our attention and our executive functioning, the more things are going to go wrong. Executive functioning is something that is almost always impaired in those with ADHD. Things like time management, problem solving, organizational skills, hindsight, foresight. But that journey from the light bulb moment to diagnosis can be a long one. So if you think you have ADHD, how do you know for sure? This is the danger of TikTok and the definition of disorder expands so much that people get confused and then you know, is it harmful? I mean, it's it's not harmful in the sense that if they go to a competent practitioner, they won't be misdiagnosed and that practitioner hopefully will, you know, help them out. I think it just will still confuse people because they might think their practitioner is, is not a competent practitioner and that they're making a mistake. So then you have this, you know, it, it creates a whole, it, it does create a big mess of a problem, but either way, we're stuck with it. And I think on, you know, probably on balance, it's, it's good that people are being made aware that there is this condition, but then it, what it tells me is that we need to do a better job educating practitioners so that they do, because you don't want practitioners treating every TikTok symptom as if it's ADHD. That, that's where it will become a big problem uh, for sure. So the first recommendation is to have that conversation with your doctor, but that's not an option for millions of Canadians who do not have a family doctor. It can be really, really difficult. There's also just huge waiting lists everywhere. Jody Parrott was diagnosed with ADHD six years ago. 
Her light bulb moment came when her daughter was being diagnosed. Since then, she's paid close to $3,000 by going through the private sector. So now she works with people who are in the process or have recently been diagnosed. And she says she hears from Canadians every day trying to navigate the complicated and often expensive system. For those who, who want to try and, and get it done quicker and jump ahead and do it privately, most private insurance doesn't cover the assessment and it's, I, I believe right now, roughly around $2,000 for an assessment. So it can be really expensive. If you look up specialists in Edmonton, where I am, most of them have wait lists. I didn't know it at the time, but I was lucky. I've had the same family doctor for decades now, so all I did was show up to my appointments. The journey to get diagnosed with ADHD can be long, overwhelming and expensive, but the benefits are there. Untreated ADHD carries a lot of risk. You're going to have more difficulty socializing. Um, you're going to be at risk for beginning a uh, substance use disorder. Um, you're at higher risk for depression. Um, that's just to name a few. Once I got on medication, my life didn't change overnight. But instead of beating myself up for every little mistake I made or thing I forgot, I was able to give myself a little bit of grace. Those mistakes shifted from character flaws to just the way my brain works. And a lot of people feel that same relief. Like I had this feeling of, wow, this is how a brain is supposed to work. I wasn't forgetful. I remembered details. I was able to focus. I was able to, I was just able to cope. I was able to get the things done that I needed to do. There's this period of, it's almost like a mourning period because you are, you think about what could have been, what your life could have been like had you known three, four decades earlier. I felt that morning. Where would I be now if I knew this earlier? That I don't know, and I'm not gonna focus on. What I do know is that I'm more productive, I'm a better listener, and I've even been on time once or twice. While there's no question having ADHD is difficult, but once you make it to the other side, it feels like a weight has been lifted that you didn't even know you were carrying. Now, I'm still tinkering with my medication, trying to figure out what's the right fit. Some of it's covered, some of it's not, but it's a journey and one that I'm happy to take.